Today we have sailed 1,000 nautical miles, which is pretty cool. That's about one third of uh, the entire trip. And we have uh, been out here on the sea for uh, about a week, uh, a week and a day. So yeah, we celebrated with uh, taking a shower, which was well needed. Uh, it's been a few days, so um, we uh, had hopes that uh, the sea would calm down so it would be easier to take a shower. But today we just uh, figured we had to do it uh, anyway. So uh, it was so nice, you feel like a new person uh, afterwards. And uh, yeah. It's the same as uh, the past days. We have uh, high winds above uh, 20 knots pretty constantly and cross seas coming in different directions. So I don't know if it's that or uh, what it is, but our sea legs are not 100% yet, which I kind of had expected them to be, but yeah, this week we have had quite different weather all the time, different sea, so maybe that's why it's taking a bit longer. Uh, I think normally you say that after three days you're into the rhythm and uh, can easily move around the boat, but that's not really the case, especially not for me. Um, both of us just mostly want to sit out here in the cockpit and watch the sea and then not do much else. So it will be interesting to see if that holds on the entire trip or if it gets better uh, in a few days or when the weather change or uh, yeah, how, how it works. I'm also surprised that we have this weather. Uh, people that we have talked to that have done this before, they say like, ah, when, once you get down to Cape Verde, it's a big sea, you only have a uh, soft swell that you barely notice, the weather is nice and everything is calm. And <laughs> exactly. What happened? No, no, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Exactly. Everything is calm. It's not calm. You have to hold on for your dear life not to fall out of your chair. And uh, things are flying everywhere downstairs uh, as soon as you try to do something. So, yeah, I don't know, they say that the weather this year has been kind of crazy, so maybe that's what we're experiencing, but um, yeah, we, we had expected a different kind of sailing, uh, definitely. But fingers crossed, uh, the winds will calm down the coming days and uh, we should have some um, pretty maybe a bit more comfortable waves as well. Yesterday evening, just as it was uh, turning dark, uh, Marcus noticed a strange sound from Elmer, our hydro generator. And it uh, turned out that the bracket to which it's attached to the boat was starting to wiggle loose. So um, we just uh, took the generator up from uh, the water and stored it uh, up on deck uh, during the night. Uh, because it was way too dark to do something yesterday. And um, now we're uh, tightening the nuts and uh, securing it uh, even more, so uh, hopefully we can uh, generate some uh, power again. Even if we have this uh, nylock uh, nuts on the um, screws, uh, in some way the vibrations from the hydro generator makes them a bit loose. It wasn't that loose, but a little, little loose. So uh, 
also the whole hydro generator vibrated. So. Now I've tensioned it and uh, mounted uh, two nylon locks uh, nuts on each screw. Hopefully that will uh, work for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we're uh, we're checking the rudder stock. Uh, since we come like third way, the rudder has starting to squeak a lot from the lower bearing. And uh, as we had had some, uh, yeah, quite hard winds and but especially quite rough waves, and we have seen, uh, I have seen that rudder stock is moving a bit. Uh, so probably the lower bearing is uh, about to, yeah, to wear down or something. There's a lot of friction, so there's this squeaking sound uh, back and forth. forth all the time uh, so now we're trying to like clean it and um, try to lubricate it uh, yeah in some way just so uh, it won't grind down uh, we want to keep our rudder until we come to uh, yeah after that also of course uh, when we come to the caribbean uh, so this is not so nice yeah, you can hear the sound and it sounds in the whole of the boat it's not a good feeling. I've checked the lower bearing and uh, yeah, it seems that it has to be replaced. Not possible to uh, do in the middle of the Atlantic though. Uh, so we have to go up on the hard uh, to pull the rudder and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, but there's some movement there and there's some high friction and stuff and the rudder stock is moving a bit not that much as uh, uh, I was afraid that it was moving but still it moves and it's that's not good um, to get rid of the squeaking sound and the friction uh, noise we have just tried to put some like olive oil or sun flower oil in it uh, and the squeaking sound disappeared. The aim with the oil is to get away of the friction and also the sound. Uh, so when we get rid of the sound we'd also get rid of the friction and the oil is uh, yeah it's all natural so it cannot destroy any bearing material or that stuff in the rudder uh, or the environment on that sake. So uh, Hopefully this will do, if we fill it up a little bit now and then uh, we will have a working rudder for uh, the rest of the Atlantic trip. Today it's uh, time to run the water maker and make some uh, new water. We just emptied our small tank, the one that's on uh, 120 liters. So uh, it's time to top it up so we're uh, full with the water again.
We're now doing a fresh water flush of the water maker after we have run it. It it's, should be uh, fresh water uh, from the water maker. So it's water maker water that we flush the water maker with. So the seawater side of the water maker uh, gets filled uh, or flushed with fresh water. So all the salty and corrosive particles from the salt and that stuff gets away from the membrane and the pumps. So this we do each time we have run the water maker. So now the tanks are full and the water maker is clean, flushed with fresh water. And yeah, of course there's uh, more advanced models of uh, water makers that uh, has auto flush and you don't need to fill up buckets uh, and um, have uh, external hoses and stuff. But uh, yeah, we kind of like this system. Um, it makes a lot of water, about 60 liters per hour, uh, with uh, very little power consumption. No. <laughs> Uh, Emmy is down below napping, uh, we are both of us quite tired, it's quite s hard to sleep at night, the boat is moving and rocking back and forth quite a lot, uh, the waves changes from time to time to be quite okay, to be very like washing machine like and tossing the boat around totally. We tried different sail settings and uh, changing the course a bit and so on, but yeah, sometimes it helps, sometimes not. Um, we try to rest a lot, it's uh, yeah, we're quite tired actually. Good morning, Emmy. Hi. Hi. How was your nap? Terrible. Why? Not very nap-like. It's so much mov movement. Uh, as you can see, we have moved the bed out in the saloon, but yeah, it's better than uh, the uh, aft uh, bed, but uh, it's still really hard to get the body to re relax when uh, you're being tossed around back and forth. So, yeah, not much of a nap, but uh, at least some uh, rest, maybe. So tired. <laughs> it's so. Uh, it's so mentally breaking to know that we have about 10 more days with this weather <laughs> and uh, if you're this tired on the first day of bad weather it's hard to imagine how it would be in 10 more days crazy so uh, 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 not what uh, I had expected the Atlantic to be. No, not at all. Not at all. And not the waves. I thought the waves would be like more like stable. More, but they change very often to different type of waves, from tossing around waves to quite stable ones. Very strange. Yeah. yeah. Now we just wanted to be oh, on Martinique, actually. <laughs> It's, it's not a pleasant ride at all. No. And we have 28 miles to our halfway mark. So it's quite a distance to go. Yeah, we have yeah, 1,500 nautical miles left. 
So it's about, yeah, what did you say, 11 days or something like that? Yeah, 10. 10, 11 Hopefully days. Hopefully less. <laughs> Hopefully less, yeah. Oh.